morning church, uh, it's Pastor Tony here coming to you with this week's episode of Comfort from the Couch and um, yeah obviously uh, things are looking fairly optimistic about um, being able to gather again sometime in the next month or so, um, obviously you need to make sure that everything's organised well and so on, uh, so stay tuned for more information about that but for now I just want us to think about a really familiar passage actually from Mark's Gospel. Um, that I'm sure most of you will know, um, and just to think about a few things that are pretty clear from there. So um, we're looking at Mark chapter uh, 4 and verse 35 through to verse 41. And as I said, it's a very familiar um, passage and story, so uh, let me read that to us. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he, that being Jesus, was in the stern, uh, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care? that we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him it's a great story this weekend i think our weather forecast has that we've got some significant storms coming our way and we've had a few already uh this year but none like this and uh sometimes there are storms that uh, we find ourselves in uh, uh perhaps not like this in terms of uh, on, in boats and so on but just storms that are seem pretty overwhelming and uh, this storm clearly was that for the disciples it wasn't a small storm uh, it, it was significant. Um, it says that uh, a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat. So this, this was a significant storm. And remember, these guys were fishermen. So this is their trade. They're used to this. But they are actually, uh, they're freaking out a bit. Uh, and, uh, and they wonder what the heck is Jesus doing. But three, there's just three quick things that I want us to see in this passage uh, as we think about it for our own lives. And the first one is this, that Jesus doesn't keep us, doesn't keep us as his followers from the storms of this life. He just doesn't, does he? Uh, following Jesus doesn't mean that everything's just going to go, uh, you know, calmly and, uh, you know, it's just going to be constant bliss and so on. No, uh, the reality is that following Jesus uh, will still mean that we go through very difficult, very uh, frightening uh, unsettling times in our lives. He doesn't keep us from the storms of this life. Uh, it's not a sign that somehow um, he's withdrawn his love from us when things get difficult. It's not an indicator uh, you know, that he doesn't care. Well, I mean, that's their question here, isn't it? They say to him, uh, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So they're, they're asking that question there. They're going, My goodness, you know, we're in a storm here. This is this is potentially life-threatening, and you're asleep. You don't appear to be doing anything. Where are you? What are you doing? Don't you care? And maybe you can resonate with that. Maybe that's a question that you might find yourself asking internally, if not out loud, when things get tough in your life. Jesus, don't you care what's happening here? But the, But what we see here is that Jesus doesn't keep us from the storms of life that he actually is with us in the storms of life. He's with us in the storm. And that is the struggle that we have when we're in the storm, is to trust him in that, to believe that, to conclude that he hasn't left us, that he still loves us, that he still cares about us, and more than that, that he's with us in the storm. He's clearly with them here. Yes, he might be resting, uh, but he's present. He's in the storm with them. 
he's journeying the storm with them uh, and he's working out his good purpose in them in the storm you know when when he actually uh, eventually gets to the point where he does calm the wind uh, still the wind and calm the waves he displays to them who he is as their creator as their great creator who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him and it's worth realizing that if they were not in the storm uh, and he didn't he wasn't needing to calm the wind and the waves then that display of his power as the creator that display of his sovereignty over the circumstances couldn't have been seen or experienced and I think that's a real key because Jesus doesn't keep us from the storms of this life and he it's one thing to realize that but it's another thing to embrace that he uh, has a good purpose by not keeping us from the storms of this life in other words he wants us to experience him and to know him better in the storms of this life as he is with us and present with us in them and that's that's the struggle isn't it that's the struggle is to trust God to to walk by faith when all the circumstances around you might be screaming out he doesn't care where is God what is going on he's with us in the storm and we can either run to him and trust in him and grow in our faith in him as hard as that might be or when the storms come we can perhaps just try and manage it and handle it on our own and that's pretty futile because usually they're bigger than we can cope with so he doesn't keep us from the storms of this life he's acting He's actually with us in the storms of this life. But lastly, at some point, he will calm the storm. He will calm the storm. He does so in this story here, doesn't he? Uh, he rebukes the wind and says to the sea, Peace, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Uh, as the Lord of creation, he calms things. He brings things to, to, a, to a peace under his rule and under his reign. Now, it's interesting to note that in the Old Testament and in a lot of the literature, books like Revelation and so on, the, the sea is a sign of the chaos of a fallen, broken, uh, fractured world that's full of rebellion and turmoil. That's the, the ocean is a sign of that. It's one of the reasons why they says there's no sea in heaven. Uh, there's a new heavens and a new earth, new creation. So what does that mean? Well, it means that things will be calm. Things will be completely under the rule and reign of Jesus, King Jesus, when he comes back. And that's what we see a little snippet of here, isn't it? The wind and the waves, the sea, that which, that, that which symbolizes the chaos of this world, brought under his rule, brought to, to, to um, uh, a peace that says there was a great calm. So he will, at some point, calm the storms. And he'll do that uh, to some degree now uh, in our lives. And even if you think about um, his grace and his mercy to you, you know, there, there are the storms of sin and shame and all the upheaval that that's brought and the, the turmoil in terms of our relationship with our Creator God and so on. He's brought peace to that. He's the Prince of Peace. He's died on the cross um, um, he is our peace uh, uh, one Peter says and uh, and so he has calmed the storm of our relationship with God the storm of God's wrath that was coming towards us and so on um, and he will uh, be with us in the storms of this life and often lead us through to the other side to a period of calm after various difficulties and challenges that we face in this life and so he will at some point calm the storm and he, he wants to work his good purpose in our lives in the storm. And then, of course, there is, the, there is the way that he will calm the storm in the future. It's not yet. But when he comes to fully and finally reign and bring all things under his rule, these words will become all the more significant and there was a great calm. 
all upheaval, all chaos, all the storms of this life brought to an end as Jesus finally and fully comes to reign his world with his redeemed people. So I just wanted to encourage you from uh, this very familiar story in the Gospels today. I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know what you're going through right at this moment. Maybe things are quite stormy for you. Maybe you're in a, you're in a period of peace, of calm. Um, but either way, I think the beauty of this passage is to show us that Jesus is with us in all of that. And we needn't be afraid. We, need to, we, can, we can trust him. We can rest in him and, and look to him in the ups and in the downs. Uh, this season of crazy time that we've been through and uh, you know, praise God looks like maybe moving towards the end of, at least in Australia and WA in particular, this kind of stormy, unsettled season. It's been a really, it's been a new opportunity for us to believe, to trust, to rest in, to look to King Jesus, to work out his good purpose. He's been wanting to work his good purpose in this time, in your life and mine, in our lives together as a church and in his world as a whole. And he's still doing that. So let's look to the Lord of creation, our creator king, who comes and calms the storm and will calm all storms ultimately one day. And we need to remember that we are in an incredibly privileged position in Australia. You know, the global uh, increase in new cases daily is probably it's worse than ever. I think there were 60,000 new cases in Brazil uh, just, just today or yesterday. So though we are, wow, it seems coming out of the other side of it, many other places in the world are not. The storm is raging. And so we can maybe pray for our uh, brothers and sisters in other parts of the globe that they will know the peace of this King and that they will be able to minister that to others who don't know Him. Friends, I'm going to pray in light of uh, this great uh, word here from Mark. Um, so I'll ask that you join me as we do that. Oh Lord Jesus, we... Thank you so much for who you are. We thank you so much for who you are and how we see you here revealed in your scriptures, in your powerful works. Thank you, Lord, that we can see very, very clearly here that our peace, that our um, yeah, sense of calm uh, doesn't necessarily need to be based on our circumstances but that you are the source of our peace and you are with us in the storms of this life in whatever we are going through and how we thank you that you are with us by your spirit our great King, the Lord of all, the Lord of creation, the Lord of the seas, the Lord over the wind, the Lord over each and every thing that there is. Lord, we are often, though, afraid. We are often unsettled. We are often startled by the circumstances of our lives when difficult things come our way. We pray that we might grow in our trust of you during these times. We pray that you might work in us by your spirit, that you might remind us of your presence, remind us of your promises, remind us of our hope that is found in you, uh, that one day you will indeed bring everything under your loving and powerful reign that there will be a great calm and eternal peace that you bring. And in the meantime, you've given us, Lord, um, a real foretaste of that now. Um, you say, peace I leave you. Not peace as the world gives, but your peace, the peace of your reign. 
You call us to let your, the peace of Christ rule in our hearts and your word also to dwell in us richly. Help us to trust you in the storm, to look for and long for the day when your reign fully comes, to submit ourselves to it now, to welcome it, to rest in it. Father, we thank you for where we are at as a nation at the moment. We thank you that you've, you've given us good government, good, good uh, uh, processes that have brought us to a place where many, of, uh, many things can return um, to normal in the next six weeks or so. Um, we praise you for that. We're mindful of other parts of the world who are uh, in really precarious uh, positions with this pandemic many people suffering many people fearful uh, many people losing loved ones Lord, we pray for your people all over this planet father we pray that your people will will shine forth the hope that we have in jesus we pray for multitudes of people to be redeemed to be rescued to be saved by you through your son father through the proclamation of jesus by your people all over this world lord you've said let us give a reason for the hope that we have always be prepared we pray that your people will be prepared and that there will be so many opportunities for the hope we have to be explained and proclaimed and held out to others. Father, thank you for your Son, the Lord of creation. Thank you that he died and has brought peace to us. He is the one mediator between God and man. And we thank you, Lord that we can now know peace with God. Having been justified by faith, we can now have peace with you through our Lord Jesus Christ, through the one who was asleep on the cushion, through the one who, who calmed the wind and the waves with a word, and through the one who laid down his life for us. This Prince of Peace, we praise you in his name. 